tries to think of a funny intro. Can't. Sorry, everyone. It's late. This is a bit of a rush job, as you can maybe tell by the surroundings and the lack of quality mood lighting. Uh, it's time. Now, what I've been doing, what, this is going to be a little montage, because really I have been doing um, little videos, little clips of the painting and weathering process. So I'm going to string a few of these together. The Hummer is finished. <laughs> Almost finished. I have one slight teething problem with the turret. In fact, it's been to Wales. It's had a run up a stream bed and snapped a, a wheel hub. Uh, there's the stump. Uh, the wheel snapped off. And uh, you've maybe seen some pictures on Instagram. You will undoubtedly be seeing a video very shortly. I'm surprised Terry hasn't uh, already done this one. Well, one of the videos I shot, I have deleted before I've managed to use it. I do refer to it in uh, the following video. So I do apologize. It, I'll talk about the video you just watched um, and then you, because you won't have watched it. <clears throat> um, I mean, it was really just me shading uh, some of the lines on the Hummer, just gently putting some shadow, some dark gray uh, against corners and uh, you know straight lines and things, just to, just to put a bit of three dimensional shading in there. For what it's worth, I can barely tell that I've done it, so mm, you know you haven't missed much. Anyway, over we go. So just a series of clips, and then I think at the end I'll I'll come back and I'll show you the truck. I'll give you a little walk around the truck uh, as it is. Okay, so enjoy, and um, yeah, here we go. Q Q Q video. Okay, so yeah, I've, I've, you've seen a little bit of airbrushing technique done. Um, so the point of the airbrushing is to shade in some of these areas some of just basically the where the panel joins are i've tried to put just a tiny bit of shading in there to start the ball rolling uh, what i'm going to do now is what i'm doing now is edging it so you can maybe just see here i've stopped there with some light gray um, just to start bringing out the edges of things now it's a multi-stage process this there's not going to be you know, there's going to be lots of things added over the top of it. So it's maybe a little bit bright right now, but it'll it'll darken down as the washes and all sorts of things are going to be added over the top of the of the rig. What I'm not doing is using anything like this, anything like silver or metallic. Uh, that will that will come at the end because I don't really think I think I think anything shiny and metallic -y and silvery has to be done very very sparingly to highlight almost like fresh marks on, on, on a surface, not so much older or indeed not not really existing at all in real life, but just for the scale, for the model, for the look of it on video, so you can make out the edges of things and make out the detail a little better the, than you would do otherwise. So this, what I'm doing right now with the grey, is really a visual trick on the eye to help emphasise the three-dimensional nature of the surface instead of looking at it on a video and it's flat um, so that's what I'm doing right now obviously helped you know if I turn the light the directional light out you'll see maybe a little bit clearer how it's bringing out those uh, little lights here and, and the, the, the edge of the rig as opposed to it being just a little bit lost in the shadow we've got a little bit more definition of the edge there I must remember to paint that cable as well so I just get a little bit on here. I, I always use a palette. I always have just a, an old marble tile. I don't want very much on the brush. And then I'll just run. I mean, it's only a cheap free brush. And I'll just run a little bit round. It doesn't have to be even. I'm not looking for, I'm not so much painting this on. Maybe I've not got quite enough on there. So I'm just trying to highlight Just trying to highlight what's going on. And you might not think you're putting much on, but you, you will be putting a bit on. And that's all I'm doing. That's all I'm going to do is just run, run around and highlight all the raised edges. Right, so I have used these uh the ak interactive paints as i think i showed you last time so it's a nato weathering set and you get 
a rain mark uh, paint thing, which is still in there, um, a wash and a filter. Now, the theory is the filter goes on first. What the filter is meant to do is, it, 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 as far as the videos I, I watched go, it emphasizes the camouflage and brings brings the paintwork out a little bit. To me, it sounds like something that a varnish, like a lacquer, would do. Anyway, that's what I thought it was going to do. And it is brown. And it is meant to be the right one. Dark brown filter and so on. That's what they what they give me in this. So, um, I painted it on the bonnet to test it. This is uh, last weekend. And basically, that happened. So it just went on, well, basically like a very thin, light brown. Um, which I don't really feel is enhancing the paintwork any. It's covering it up. I mean, to be honest, I have a view that these real paints these fancy expensive paints that are meant to be color matched to the real thing and so on shouldn't really need enhancing by painting something over the top right enhance them out of the box is my suggestion and my feeling they i look i'm perfectly happy with the color of them but i'm prepared to give this a go because it's new and you know you've got to try new things right it comes part of the set so anyway so i put it on the bonnet saw that it was going to do this and removed it as best i could and in doing so it kind of left a dusty a dusty brown finish behind as you can see after i kind of removed it all now the video is for filters you're not meant to take it off okay it's meant to go on the paint and stay on don't confuse that with a wash which i'm going to come to in a minute so what i chose to do instead was to use the filter as a wash which is where it is now so i've reapplied it but this time i haven't frightened myself to death when it's gone into this kind of skinny, thin, misty black, uh, brown paint, um, it will come up. It's enamel, so it won't. It, it's getting pretty hard now. It's been on an hour or so. But what I've done, I'll just show you the other side of this. So I've put it on, and then I've taken it back off again using some uh, odorless thinners instead of using my normal stinky thinners, white spirit, in other words. Uh, and I'm an old sock, uh, one of my daughter's old socks. And so I'm going to just wet it with the, the, the slightly damp sock, okay? Not really trying to take it off with that. And I'm going to use the sponge, and you can see where, see the kind of dark shading. That's that's what I've done. If I'm trying to do this one hand, if the whole shell ends up on the floor, then I'll not be very happy. But I'm basically a combination of dabbing to try and... I don't want a great deal of brush lines. You see, I don't want regular kind of shaped marks on this the human eye is drawn to it right so it's going to look pretty obvious so a sponge is quite good at doing random things random shapes random patterns and uh so i wet the wet the surface and then get in there with the sponge to actually move this pigment around and try and get away from the idea of regular brush marks Okay, so you can still see the camo underneath, you can see the dark and the green, um, but I haven't got this kind of harsh, obviously just dabbed on uh, effect. Now, underneath this, so this is this is the thing I'm doing right now, but last night I did the uh, dark wash, which is, if I can find it in here, so there's the dark wash. Um, so this is a pure wash. And it, it is essentially, as you can see, it's a kind of dark, um, dark greeny, dark greeny kind of colour. Um, I mean, it's basically just thin down paint, right? It's nothing fancy, it's just thin paint. So it runs, it's a bit like ink in a fountain pen. So you, you, t you put it on your brush and you, you dab it on and it runs and spreads out. And obviously it gets even thinner as it spreads out. So the idea is you go around all the all the little marks, all the little raised bits, and you wash this in, and it just kind of runs in capillary style. But you, you do have to dab a fair bit, and obviously you then end up with like smudges. So I go around afterwards and take off all the smudges, and uh, it it over over the course of like like all good weathering over the course of a, of a project over the course of the side of the body, for example, it does emphasise a lot of the panels it does bring things out you can maybe make out the wash that's in these these little divots you can see closer there and obviously when you bring it out and you smudge it a little bit you then start getting some streaks i have as you can see put some light gray streaks on as well um 
so that's really what I'm doing. I'm, I'm using this filter. I just wanted to let you guys know while I'm doing it that um, I, I can't really say that this is something that's going to enhance your paintwork. Um, I, I don't know what they're getting at with that. I really don't. To me, it just looks like a wash. You just paint it on and you wipe most of it off and it just stains a little bit and builds up in the corners and the recesses. So... Okay, so the AK Interactive, uh, we're in marks for NATO tanks. I'm going to try and put some rain streaks, some, some just water streaks on the truck. Um, so I've shaken the bottle. That's all I've done. And it is really thin in there. See, it's sloshing about. So it's really thin. Uh, I'm going to use my patented WPL tyre bottle holder just to help in case I knock the bottle. All right. It's pretty... A little bit more stable so all i'm going to do is i'm going to use this brush to put it on with and then i'm going to use my bristly stiff bristle brush to spread uh spread it around on or once it's dried off a bit so i'm going to dab a bit in here again i don't want a whole bunch of this on um and then we think about where we might get some rain streaks so i'm going to go down And what I've discovered is, you can even go up obviously, what I've discovered is it doesn't really, you're not trying to make the rain, the streaks so much with the with this brush. This is just applying some paint roughly where you're going to want it. The rain, the streak effect, because obviously this is really heavy and not very subtle, yeah. Um... You know, that's never going to pass, is it? Really what you're doing is you're just putting paint onto the surface. Now what they seem to have managed to do is to make this stuff um, drag quite well. It doesn't just wash off or, you know, kind of pool. If you, you know, if you thin something down, it tends to pool a little bit, um, you know, where it kind of runs and stuff. And it's not really running. Uh, as such it's not running it's not pooling it's quite uniform you see it hasn't just gone almost transparent and a big blob of it here it, it very easy of course to go overboard with this and put but you are effectively going to be able to wipe it all off if you, if you put too much on you don't like what you've done you can just wipe it off but obviously whatever you've got underneath any kind of enamel based weathering underneath is uh is likely to come off as well so you don't want to you don't want to put too much on Right, I'm just using, uh, like I was before, the orderless thinners, just so it doesn't stink the house out. And um, I'm dabbing off as much of this as I can. So you can, can we see? So there is still quite a lot on the brush, all right? That's going to be too much. I don't want it. I don't want it that wet. Okay, maybe getting, getting... Yes, it still feels really damp. Because what will happen is, there's every probability is it'll just wash it off. But now I'm going to just tease it out and the wetter your brush the more circumspect you have to be the more careful you want to be with this because there you go so you see what I you see a big dark smear so that's where the thinners has gone through and kind of washed it off and I don't what I don't want to do is wash off anything all my other weathering layers that are underneath um i would have preferred to let them dry off a little longer um but i'm in a bit of a rush for the trip to wales so i, I, mean, I don't want to spoil the thing but i don't want to whip off all of my browns and washes and things <laughs> i've like Rain marks on, on perfectly clean paint. Coming up. You see, you see how it kind of... It, you just wet it and then it sort of dissolves and loses its definition. Some of them might disappear a little bit, but the point really is that you are going on heavy at the start. But then this kind of 
takes the there's no kind of about it it actually does just take off most of what you've put on but leaves behind a kind of streak of so maybe you can let's have a good look at it there how does that look i mean this is the only the second time i've done this because it's the other side yeah i've done so that's the idea and it just adds a little bit not everywhere some are some are going to be more pronounced than others but in the end they build up to being a little bit more pronounced you end up with a lot more texture and a lot more variation in the shades of the panels you know the, the, these these rigs are all weathers all kind of conditions they usually matte finish as well so of course they're gonna they're gonna attract dirt they're gonna attract staining they're gonna change tone and it's not like a glossy civilian car that you polish and you and it comes out nice and uniform these things are not so i really wanted to try and get um like i tried with the ca30 to try and get that panel variation the tone variety of, of old used dirty abused military paint so here she is people and um i hope you have enjoyed this little kind of detailed look at what i've done to get this the way it is uh, it's been a bit of an adventure it's been as usual with me more work than i thought it was going to be when i first opened the box it's an RTR for goodness sake. How much how much work can it be to repaint it? Turns out quite a lot. Um, it did really well in Wales before its uh, wheel snapped off. <laughs> Minor impediment. But that's been repaired. Thank you Banggood for speedy parts delivery. So I'm quite pleased that parts are not a nightmare to obtain or wait for. Uh, there's a couple of mods. Obviously the gun's done as you can see up there. I might do a little bit of staining, a little bit more work on it you can't really tell in this light it needs to be outside so you can see it properly i deliberately haven't done it the same as the body because it would be a fit it would be fitted on afterwards um you know many years after this truck started in its service probably so it's not the same color it's i, I will want to do want to streak it a little bit more maybe um i even use my old acrylic wash method to weather it rather than using the fancy paints as you've seen me use on this so Thanks for sticking with it, and I will try and do a little video outside at some point soon. Um, I've got a fitment issue with the roof and the gun turret bolts uh, are fouling on the windscreen. So it's not quite ready for its proper debut yet, but uh, hopefully at the weekend I'll be out with this and you'll get to see some daylight close-ups of it and see it in its natural glory. But uh, yeah, from, uh, fr from this bench and uh, this truck... We will say goodnight and thank you for watching again.